This video is best viewed in full screen mode and on YouTube that's this icon right here and if you have a high bandwidth connection uh, you also want to watch it in HD which is this icon right here. And uh, there are a lot of different uh, things that will give you an error. Uh, mostly it has to do with uh, what I call sanity checks. Uh, if you have uh, payment dates that are out of order, uh, if you have like this situation here where you had a payment put in but no date, uh, if you paid out more than you got in, uh, anytime the system uh, sees something that just doesn't make sense, it'll bring you up uh, a, an error and it'll show up in that list and then you can just click on that menu item, look at the error, and it'll tell you exactly what the problem is uh, so you'll know exactly how to resolve it. And now we're going to talk about uh, document uh, creation. Okay, and the first thing we need to talk about is merge fields. Um, merge fields are what you put in to the document uh, to pull a field out of the database. So if you were to put uh, this field here uh, into your document, uh, you would get the value of that field. So we're going to hide those merge fields, and we're going to go over here, and we're going to open the documents folder, and we're going to bring up this here and see what it looks like. And this is the merge field for today's date, and there's that judgment debtor's name that we talked about. So I'm going to close that, and we're going to say document, create document, and we're going to select that one there. And in this particular case, we have two judgment debtors, so it's going to ask us which one do you want to use, and we're going to select Tamara. And then there it is, our document's been created, and we are good to go. Okay, and I want to take a second here to show you another uh, document that we're going to create, which is this one right here. It's got the judgment debtor's name and the date of birth. And the reason I want to show you this is because uh, I want to show you what happens when you try to I'm going to select Tamara again. What happens if you create a document and the one of the fields is uh, missing? In this case, it's the date of birth, which is this field right here and th there is no uh, value available, it's just blank. And it just wants to make you aware of that because when you create this document, this date of birth here it just goes away, it disappears. Uh, if we take a look, you see it's just gone. And so that's just its way of warning you because maybe you're creating a important contract or something and that field is buried in your document and all of a sudden it's just missing. And if you don't read it over real carefully, you're not gonna notice it. So that's just the uh, uh, program's way of warning you that, hey, uh, some of the fields that you want to populate in this document are going to show up as blank. That's just a couple uh, quick things on how document creation works. I could go over a lot more uh, detail on that, but uh, I'm trying to keep this video relatively short. So if you want to know all there is know about document creation, you can select this down here, document help, and uh, there's an extensive video that walks you through all uh, aspects of document creation. But now what we're going to do is we're going to move on uh, over to this backup menu. Okay, so we're going to go over to this judgment tab and we're going to uh, backspace and erase this case number and we're going to save it. So let's say you did that by accident and all of a sudden you realize you lost your case number and you want to get it back. Well, what you can do is you go to your backup menu and you select show history for this record. And now the program goes into a different mode and all you can do is view uh, this record in different points in time. These are all the different times where this uh, uh, particular record was backed up. And if we select this date here, uh, boom, there it is. Uh, there is our case number before we erased it. And now if I want to, I can just go over here. I can say replace current record with this one. And uh, say, uh, click on it. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to replace this live record with this older version? And you say, yeah. And it's going to double check. Because any time you do anything that's relatively dangerous, like... Uh, uh, replacing new data with older data. It's going to double check. You say yeah, and then boom, there it is. Uh, you've got this record restored from your backup with the case number that uh, you were missing. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can restore from a backed up uh, database. Go over here and you select load backup database and you can select uh, from your primary or secondary location. You select the date. And what that's uh, done is it's loaded in a database from that time frame. And right now you haven't overwritten your live data, you've just loaded this database into the system and you can go through and you can view all the records but you you know 
can't make changes and save it or anything. You're just viewing your old data. And that's basically the, uh, gives you a chance to review it before you take it in and bring it in uh, as your live database. Uh, if you just want to go back to the way it was and don't, you know, don't restore from the backup, you just click this button. But let's say, yeah, I do want to restore uh, from this backup. You click that button. And it says, are you sure you want to leave your live database and replace it with this one? And you say, yeah. And then it gives you the good old double check. And then you say, yeah. And then uh, there you are. Okay, and now I want to take a moment to go over a couple of these uh, really handy utility programs. One here is your Rolodex. And this is basically just uh, electronic Rolodex. And uh, it's really simple to use. Uh, you can, first of all, you can sort off these columns. So if this got really big, you could sort off the last name to find the person that you're looking for. If you want to create a new record, you just click that button and say we're going to add Jill here. And we're going to put in a phone number. And we hit save, and then there she is. She's in the list. Uh, also, uh, there's a handy little function here that if there's a web address associated with this particular contact, uh, you can put it in there and you hit the go button. Uh, it takes you right to that website. So it's a nice little shortcut there. And so we're going to close that. Um, the Rolodex is really, really easy to use. Okay, now we're going to go over the scheduling program. And the scheduler is basically an electronic Rolodex. And when you bring it up, it automatically defaults to this week. Uh, over here on the left is your calendar. And uh, right now we have the 18th selected because that's today's date. And whatever week is selected in the calendar is what week gets loaded into this grid here. Uh, so let's say, for example, I want to create an appointment for Tuesday at 11 o'clock. Well, I just go to that spot in the grid. And let's just say I'm going to have lunch with John. Well, I just type it in. And there it is. Uh, Tuesday, October 20th, 11 a.m., lunch with John, and I want to get reminded 60 minutes before. And if I want to change that to 30 minutes before, I certainly could. I just do that and save the changes. Uh, now, if John called me up and said, hey, let's make it noon, i got a couple different options. One is I can just hold down my control key and just drag that down, and now it is now at noon. Or another thing I could do is I could click on the Move Appointment To button. And uh, when I do that, it moves it to wherever uh, I select. Um, also, uh, another thing I could do is let's say uh, I want to move an appointment over here. And I decide I'm going to do that next week. So I can click on Move Appointment To. And I can select uh, Next Week in the Calendar tool. And then I just click right there, and now I have moved that appointment uh, to next week. And whenever you make any changes, this Save button lights up, and this uh, top area here also turns a, a, a light yellow color. And that's just to remind you that you need to save your changes. And that's because until you uh, save your changes, the system will not remind you that appointment because um, you haven't committed to it yet. So that's just a way of saying, hey, make sure you save everything. And then uh, what would happen here is uh, whenever you have an appointment, uh, whenever the reminder, let me see, for example, here, 30 minutes before this time comes up, the uh, system would uh, pop up this form and uh, let you know that this appointment was due, or coming due in 30 minutes, I should say. And also a little audio alarm goes off. Uh, so if you're not in the room, you can hear it and know that you have an appointment uh, coming due. And also, you don't have to have uh, this uh, form open. As long as you have your judgment management system program running, uh, the uh, reminder will automatically come to you. And uh, so that's pretty much uh, the scheduler. It's pretty darn easy to use, but a very handy tool. For more information, you can visit our website, uh, or you can email me at this address here. And I also want to mention uh, the National Judgment Network. If you're interested in the judgment recovery business, I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, I'm a member, and I've found it to be invaluable. And uh, for the record, I'm not receiving any kind of uh, compensation for this endorsement.